Hello folks, welcome to the Poly Champions YouTube. This is an amazing 2v2 pro replay review. I have never seen a Polytopia game like this. You'll see an embassy on turn 5, a shaman killed on turn 6, a new shaman on turn 9, Five centipedes from a level 10 city. Sabotage and Scorched Earth. Coordinated Night Chains. Plus, placing the Tower of Wisdom on a Drylands map. You will not want to miss this replay, folks. It is incredible. Okay, let's see the replay. Hello, I'm eSpark. I'm the leader of the Arctic Wolves, and with me today is Max and Chris. Hi, I'm Max. I'm a Ronin. I've been playing Polytopia for many years, but just joined Polychamps around three quarters of a year ago. And uh, I'm Chris. I'm the team leader of Kraken. I've been playing on Polychamps for about two years, and I've been playing Polytopia for about six and a half years now. All right, I want to see this crazy game you guys were talking about. So this game um, is especially wild because, number one, the tribe picks, as we'll see in a second, are very unusual. This is a four-point 2v2 using our tier list. Normally, you don't see Polaris on Drylands. Um, and also, normally, you don't see Chinchi. Neither tribe is considered to be uh, the meta right now for, the, for 2v2s. Um, however, this was a kind of an experimental game. Both uh, both sides wanted to try something new, so that's why we went with these compositions. Wow. So, Chris, you're Barter. Max is Chinchi. Viking the Cat is Polaris. He's on Lightning. And Mind Phase, he's also Lightning, is Symanti. Yeah. My spawn, pretty typical. But I have a lot of forests, and I have very good, close resources that tell me that there's some nice villages near my capital. On the other hand, Viking spawn as Polaris is very barren, um, so he is probably just going to go towards the center. Yeah. Symanti plays the usual fungi. Mm -hmm. Turn zero, and then getting a warrior later. To boost. I trained a second warrior. <laughs> yeah. And moving towards the center. Yep. Seeing those two animals. Potentially is a village there. I find my first village. I can go towards the center. He misses the village. Yeah. Mind phase trains a warrior. All right, Max. I make my first this. blunder. Yeah. So I forgot that villages cannot spawn near mountains for Chinchi's specifically on your mountains with no mines so that was just a guarantee miss i should have just gone straight east because that uh, uh provide pretty good chances that there would be a village nearby but fortunately he finds another village and this village has a lot of resources and, and again, notably ruin. all of yeah and ruin and the village has a lot of animals and a lot of forests and that's good because his other village that he sees also has a lot of animals and a lot of forests. So we're definitely eyeing hunting in forestry. Yep. I head towards close resources. Viking keeps moving towards the center and finds a village. And mine face plays for the center. I go for the typical barter opening mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of Chopping to upgrade capital and then upgrading my second city and taking a workshop. Yep, very standard. Yes, very, very standard. Now, Viking, oh. however, not very standard, skips the village. And we'll see why in just yeah. a second. Oh. And, and it's very nice. They get on. double ruin. So the they Mooney a, he, oh. did not go onto the village. Interesting. No. Yeah. Yeah, they get a lucky with a double ruin there, too. Mm. Yes. So this is an important place to pause. Yeah, you meet Symanti. So, or Max meets Symanti, yeah? Correct. Max meets Symanti. And more importantly, look how close Vikings Mooney is to Mind Phase's Warrior. Now, a strategy that was emerging when this game originally started was rushing diplomacy on Drylands, especially. 
And the way that you would normally do that is by sending an explorer to meet your teammate. But they don't really have that option here. So they're actually manually moving towards each other. But they're playing an incredibly wacky opening. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it's going to produce a really interesting setup here <laughs> wow. pretty soon. Yeah, another, another reason why they skip those villages is because when you take villages, you, your tech costs increase. Yeah. And uh, if they're going for diplomacy, that's a tier three tech. That's going to be a huge increase in costs, especially in the early game, if they take more villages. So skipping villages actually gives them diplomacy faster, which gives them more stars per turn. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Diplomacy. So rush. now Max gets mining mm -hmm. because all of his cities have mines. Yeah. And I get a rider. Strategy. So there you go. Strategy Viking. because he wants to get to diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a little bit scared he would hit my warrior there, but in hindsight, that was not really good for uh, for Simanti. Yep. I find a bunch of villages here and upgrade my cities, yeah. get some riders. Well, you're all alone in the east corner. That bardeur is just like. Nobody's. Oh, yeah. Those are not contested. Those are yours, free and clear. Yeah. We see this yeah. and we're so happy. <laughs> yeah. Chris's village density uh, at this point is really good, and later on, it just continues to get better. Yeah. So I'm expanding really quickly. Viking gets a population ruin, which Ooh. is absolutely huge because it's going to allow him to get diplomacy really fast. Wow. That's fortunate. Yeah. They meet each other, they and meet. there we go. Diplomacy on turn five? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a strategy. And still two cities for Simanti. Um, very aggressive yeah. shaman placement as well. I'm just doing well. typical chin stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I get an explorer here. Good. That was helpful. I just, yeah, I discover most of Simanti's... Uh, territory and I see that Simanti actually has no troops there yeah um, this is actually super important we see two tiles in Simanti's second city and we put a map merge together where we merged our screenshots so that we could see each other's vision mm -hmm. oh you knew where the other city, city was and you knew the shaman yes. had to be there exactly Ooh. and so we set up a nice little play where we know we're going to get a certain number of stars from me meeting Simanti. So I can afford to buy climbing, move on to the mountain, meet Simanti. I have just enough stars after um, chopping one forest to afford roads to put a road west of the village, which allows me to kill Simanti Shaman on turn six <gasps> and siege their only other city. Wow. Oh, so we feel like pretty really excited good. when we do that. Wow, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, and Chris has a nice bounce here onto the rune as well, which mm. is just yeah. great. Yeah. This is really <laughs> cool. It's like the cherry on top of a really good turn. Yeah. However, okay. they're doing really well for themselves too because now they get the second embassy up. Mm -hmm. So we're yeah. having, they have really high eco despite having like no cities. So Simanti yeah. actually has higher stars per turn than I do, even though they um, only have two cities. Oh. They decide to take an explorer here went... because they want to deny me the workshop, mm -hmm. and they also want to get vision. Mm -hmm. And then they get forestry to chop all the yeah. forests in that city, so it's useless. Sabotage. Salted earth. Yes. Scorched earth. Yeah. And then yeah. they get the border growth of a century. Uh, we can yeah. go to Max's vision, so I can show you just how incredible this border growth is. But there are five mines. Every single one of those mountains, except for one, is a mine. So they yeah. have so much population in that border growth. It is yeah, and crazy. They also have two fungi and a level five sawmill spot there. Yeah, so we'll see in just a second what they're capable of, what Simanti is capable of doing when they have that much population in one city. Mm hmm. Max continues expanding. I get a nice population ruin here myself um, and grow my economy and explore. get an explorer. 
Oh, and, uh, oh it, yeah, it, it was did a not, bad explore. Yeah. That was not helpful. Yeah, so we had planned an entire turn around Chris meeting uh, Polaris in mm-hmm, the north mm-hmm. and using those stars to go for roads, to go for like all sorts of good things, for upgrading his capital, all these things, and it ended up just not working out because the explorer decided to choose the one tile and go into the corner. Yeah. We had a five-sixth chance of the explorer going the right way, and it decided that today was the day it was not going to show up to the office and do its job. Yeah. Sad moment. Very sad. Okay, I noticed your Viking has I... so many stars right now. Yeah. Yeah. And he gets mining. He gets an yep. explorer. He gets a really good, good explorer. Explore. That's useful. Yeah. Yeah. And now he's like really starting to pop off because lots of mines and more importantly those are open forge spots. He doesn't need to get forestry to chop anything. So and since he has diplomacy, yeah. he trains the first cloak of the game on turn seven. And we see this cloak and we're like, oh no. <laughs> we we are kinda <laughs> scared actually. So notice how at this point, although Polaris has used up all their explore potential explorer spots, and also all their cities are leveled up. They still have no vision over Chris's territory yeah. or Barter's territory. So this becomes very important later on in the game. Mm-hmm. Yes. Simanti gets their first centipede. This is the, this is the first of many. This is, yeah, yeah, we were not can. necessarily expecting this. Max gets an archery ruin. Um, which isn't particularly useful because we needed riding anyway to try to stop this cloak. So we don't end up training any archers because our idea here is Viking's cloak only has a couple possible options on mm-hmm. where it can move. Mm-hmm. So we decide to go riding here to make sure that we can probably reveal it mm-hmm. using a rider bounce um, on our next turn. Okay. Yeah, and if you reveal a cloak, they cannot cloak your city next turn, even if they're in range of hitting that city. Mm. Exactly. We see another village, and now I start to connect together my cities with roads and level up all my cities. You get an explorer. And here we finally get the explorer we're looking for, which is really important. It meets Max, and it gives us almost full vision of Polaris. Mm -hmm. So now we feel pretty, pretty good about my position and what what I'm capable of doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this was a really great explorer. Just like last turn, we had planned uh, quite a bit on how we would spend stars and move units after we use this explorer. And uh, this time, since the explorer actually went in the right direction, we were able to do all that. Uh, as you can see, Chris's road setup is going to be really nice here. Um, it's just straight lines across his territory. And with minimal star expenditure, he's able to connect a lot of his cities and get Grand Bazaar. Yeah, it looks like you're yeah, about I'm to get a giant, ridiculous. right? Let's see. it. Yes. The capital giant is incoming. There you go. And just lots of cheap upgrades make it easy to <clears throat> get my economy going mm-hmm. at this point in the game. But keep in mind, yeah. because of embassies, they're still really close to us in economy. Yeah. Like, Viking has yeah. 20 stars per turn and three cities. Yeah, so we can also notice that, unfortunately, Chris does not have too many good sawmill spots. So although he has really good village density, his giant potential isn't necessarily the best. Yeah, I do get these nice two early giants, so we feel good about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On Viking's turn... He gets smithery and trains two swordsmen. So we went from seeing Viking getting a cloak on turn seven to getting two swordsmen on turn eight. And we're just like, oh, like, what is going on? What is happening on their side? All these tier three units coming at you in the early game. We know now that gummies are coming from them. And uh, this is like, we're, we're definitely worried 
Mostly because a Max is a little bit weak at the moment. Mostly because of this. <laughs> so Anti sends a centipede at us. So, so he wait, did a, yeah, he did a, a giant push, and a centipede exactly. without a segment can move two squares. So they were able to move three tiles to get to you and eat you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, we actually anticipated this giant push, this giant centipede push into killing a unit on my city. So we placed warriors, and I placed three warriors around that city in range of hitting a potential centipede on that city. And also, Chris placed two riders that turn so that we can almost trap the centipede, in a sense. Yeah. So yes. you expected um, that siege, and you, yeah, you anticipated it. Mm -hmm. But it's scary because Max's position is fragile. Because he doesn't have backline cities, which are cities that are difficult for your opponent to attack that can train units each turn to help defend. Mm -hmm. So this is going to become a problem later on. I'm basically sandwiched between Polaris and Cymanti. Yeah. I have very little space to expand as I have to dedicate many of the units that I train on attacking and defending. Yes. I'm only able to send one warrior west here. It's the way the map was just created. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we. this is especially true because his warrior this turn moved into the corner and found nothing. Nothing! So we know that his cities, even if they exist, they're not well placed. Or at least in the corner, they are not well placed. Look at that lonely for... warrior. So disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a defense bonus, though. He's not, he's not doing too badly. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, yeah. we also planned. We played a little bit of Minesweeper, as yeah. they say. Yes. And we planned out where the cloak was probably going to be. And so we used that to kill his warrior and then bounce onto the cloak tile. And you revealed the cloak. And... Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice. So now it's not hitting our city this turn. We've saved ourselves a turn here, and that's very important. We revealed the cloak. And now I can get my um, Grand Bazaar. Mm -hmm. I'm taking this advantage of upgrading my cities. This is a fantastic turn all around. We get another Explorer. Because we want the rest of the vision Ooh. in um, Polaris's side. Mm -hmm. We can't yet see their capital. So we want to be able to make sure that they don't have any surprises for us. Mm -hmm. And we get the vision that we need. In yeah. fact, we get all the vision that we need, got it all. and we see that they just have a lone capital sitting there. So we think now is the time when we can play a little bit aggressively on my side and just try to take as much space as possible mm -hmm. while they're still really, really slow to expand. This is the beauty of team games, is that when you are sieged, especially if you can anticipate it, your teammate can come and save you from disaster. Exactly. Viking starts moving the cloak towards me, so that's um, not fun, and I have no idea. Right. We still think the cloak is headed for Max, actually. And then Viking gets this huge border oh, growth. Oh, wow. So we are presented with the same problem we had with Cymanti, where they have a huge border growth and a lot of potential to get gummies, um, and now we have to deal with yeah get another threat of a lot of um, units coming at us quickly. There's a gammy. It's another one. Yep. And another yeah. centipede. No, nope. yeah, they must be it's celebrating. Worse. Oh, it's he got worse. a new shaman. Yep. Because yeah, his costs the one... are so low, <gasps> like he can just go philosophy and get another shaman. Wow. Yeah. This was the one turn we also had a bad coverage of Cymanti's capital. We should have probably been more vigilant here and placed a couple more riders closer in case he were to train a shaman. But unfortunately, we decided not to. He doesn't have mining or sawmills. He can... Oh, think of all the centipedes he can make. Yeah, it's going to get, it's gonna <gasps> okay, get let's pretty see. crazy. Let's see. We now get um, forestry for Max, mm -hmm. and this is important because 
He needs giants if he wants to defend against those gummies. Mm -hmm. um, not because giants do particularly well against gummies, but because we just need HP yeah. to help defend. And the monument allows us to get a giant to help defend from Samanti, so we max buys himself a lot of time. Yeah. Which is important. Yeah. And you get another city, connect it with a road. I this is my like fourth explorer of the game. You got a lot um, of but, explorers. Yeah, we need we need all the vision we can get. And we see that yes. shaman and we're like, oh shoot. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Especially since Chris when riding is going rider spam, having all those extra all that extra vision really allows him to utilize his riders a lot better with roads. He can get snipes on weak units or steel villages. All that stuff isn't possible without good vision. There's two and villages down in the south that Simanti hasn't bothered to get. Exactly. They're so far away from Simanti's capital that now we look at those villages and we think maybe we can steal both yeah, of them. I bet you could get them. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's also because Chris's pressure so uh, came so early on with his riders and his shaman snipe basically didn't allow Simanti to go for that village without being threatened mm -hmm. by Chris's riders. Mm -hmm. We make a little play for this ruin that we find in the north, and um, keep keep up the upgrades. Um, doing barter things, which is getting really high stars per turn by turn ten, um, and just getting like a good number of giants going. So we look at my position, and we're like, "This is great! Like my position's fantastic." Mm -hmm. The thing is, um, that's not the problem. <laughs> the problem is Max. Max's position is really weak oh you got a hit and... from a cloak yep viking cloaks me this turn which we didn't expect at all fortunately we have a lot of units in range to help deal with this mm -hmm. but it could have been a lot worse than it was yeah, luckily chris has enough riders to defend that and now here comes another centipede the epic level five sawmill spot yep but notably Samanti moves their shaman south, mm -hmm. which um, ends up being really bad for them in the future. Swordsman. Swordsman's going down. And we're kind of just holding up on defense on Max's side and hoping that things that we can probably defend against the, uh, the Gamis. Yeah, the encroaching Gamis with their defense yeah. bonus mountains. We throw some units against the Gami that Viking has, just to make sure that it's weak enough, so that if he moves it closer to Max, Max can kill it. Yeah. Actually, there's more about that. So we hit his Gami twice specifically, because next turn, we were expecting him to move his Gami uh, left onto the defense bonus mountain, or to kill that warrior. And if that happened, what we would have been able to do is to giant push my giant on the center city uh, to hit that Gami, mm. and then use my uh, warriors and riders uh, along with Chris's riders to finish it off. All right, let's see. <laughs> we just get a little on siege here, dealing with all those pesky daggers. You're going for that south can. village. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Viking decides to go for me, ah. so our plan is all for nothing, but it's okay. Because we didn't want him going towards Max anyway, so we're happy with that. He gets another Gami. Yep, another Gami. Yeah. And here come the boosted centipedes. He gets smithery, which is important mm -hmm. because he's got all those mines. Mines, so, so many mines. It's going to be another centipede coming out of that city next turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, because Chris went riding earlier and expanded really fast, and I don't have any backline cities, we still don't have math when Ga a Viking is pushing all these gummies towards us. Mm. So at this point in time, these gummies are very powerful. No catapults, yes. no archers. You don't have any range on your barter side. Exactly. You have to throw units at them mm -hmm. and kill them that way. So yeah, traditionally, more giants joyfully win us the game, but gummies really change things up because you can't just throw giants at them and go for both eco and troops at the same time. Mm -hmm. You really have to think about what you want to go for to counter them. Exactly. They're a really difficult unit to deal with, 
And that's why, even though Polaris is an unusual choice on drylands, it can be very, very strong. But we finally get mathematics for um, Max, and he gets a catapult to try to defend against the guy. I end up moving my giant onto the mountain. It makes it so that the Gami can't move onto that mountain next turn and hit my catapult. So it basically provides a health barrier that gives my catapult a turn to function and hit that Gami with. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's the zone of control, yeah. And a frozen giant is still useful for having a lot of units, or a lot of HP. Mm -hmm. It's a big shield. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now I'm cleaning up and continuing to expand. And we can finally grab that ruin in the north that we were looking for for a while. And here, um, we set up a play to try to uh, unseige the city that I just captured mm. by getting mathematics next turn. Because we know that Symanti is yeah. probably going to go for it with their senti. Yeah, in hindsight, it probably would have been better to giant pop on that city first with a sawmill, uh, a fruit, and a, and a monument. But at the time, we were thinking we could just pop it off. Because if we didn't let him siege the city, then he wouldn't have an extra centipede segment. He wouldn't get a free kill on our rider. And he also wouldn't take the stars per turn production away from that city. Yeah. So maybe a small mistake in hindsight. Um, but perhaps it was for the best, because he keeps his shaman in the same place. And that's really important. But now the gamis are coming in, and they're freezing Max's giants. So you have to be very concerned about that. And I'm getting sieged by the Centipede, which we can unsiege, but it's still going to cost us stars per turn. Mm -hmm. And Tim gets another Centipede. Yeah. <laughs> so many Centipedes. Max is trying to frantically level up his backline cities and get some more catapults. Keep getting rid of the Swordsman, but the Viking is still advancing. I get another population ruin. And unfortunately, the trade. other gives trade. Oh no, <laughs> trade. So trade on dry lands is pretty brutal. Ugh. Unfortunately, that means that we just have to spend all the stars this turn on giant popping this mm -hmm. centipede out to prevent it from capturing my city. Yeah. We also get sawmills this turn, uh, or mathematics. One other thing is that that giant we sent up north initially was uh, had the idea of, uh, of countering Polaris. But uh, in hindsight, it probably would have been better to send it towards Symanti because Polaris's gamis just counter the giant so well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah here we, we get a nice gami kill. Here. Yeah. So we are at least kind of keeping Polaris's unit counts and gami counts low um, and preventing them from building up a critical mass of units. They do a nice little push here to keep me off of the city and continue moving in on Max, who isn't looking so so hot after that Gami has just frozen more of his units. And this centipede with two segments is moving in towards him from the back. Mm -hmm. So he's almost getting sandwiched between a Gami and a centipede, which are like a rock in a hard place here. Yep. Um, a bug and an ice popsicle. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Because of the extra centipedes that Symanti is able to produce, he finally has the space to go for that bottom village. Exactly. The swordsman blocks, and now the centipede can claim the city uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. Max gets a great star ruin here. Ooh. This is probably one of the mo one of the more important moments in his defense of this city. Yeah. And with our 41 stars, that's like a huge amount of stars, we spent quite a bit of time discussing what strategy would be best to pursue here. Isn't there a cloak coming from Polaris? Is basically yes. guaranteed to land on one of my cities. And unfortunately, I realized that Chris and I are about one or two units short of fully defending the cloak and the gamis with catapults and riders and such. And uh, for this reason, you'll see I go for... Uh, an interesting technology that's rarely used in uh, high-level gameplay. Construction and farming. Hmm. Indeed. And this is what's called the Scorched Earth tactic, where you get rid of all of the population in a city and all of the tile improvements so that even if your opponents capture it, they can't use it very well. We knew that Max was probably going to lose that city, to the cloak 
and the reason that we destroyed all the buildings now is because after the cloak hits, all the daggers will, um, they'll be on the resource tiles that we'd want to get rid of. So we have to ha have to either do this now, or we're never going to be able to do it. Wow. Exactly. Scorched earth. <gasps> yep. Uh, rare uses of construction. And yeah. um, we do have farming now, which is good for Max because he has a lot of farms. And that allows us to potentially get another giant in his capital. Just staying alive. Yeah. Staying alive. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Keep Chin Chi from dying. His... That's the name of the game. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We start picking away at the, seg the segments on the mm -hmm. centipede. We hit this uh, swordsman down south once with one uh, rider, which mm -hmm. generally isn't that good. But in this case, it forces Simanti to put his centipede on the village and not threaten us with that centipede if he wants to get that village as soon as possible. Because now his swordsman can't move two tiles to get on that village. That's so unusual. How often do you see centipedes going to claim villages? <laughs> Yeah, but in this case, we forced them to do it, so they had to divert that centipede away from us. This game has so many unusual things about it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I like it so much. It's so, just a quirky game. It's so different. Full of interesting plays. Oh, there's and the there cloak. Yeah, you knew that was coming. Yeah. So when that cloak hit the city that's in debt, does it get? Does it actually steal stars or no? It does. And at the time, Max and I didn't realize this. We thought that because it had negative population, the, it would not steal stars from the city. But it did steal stars. So Viking ends up getting six more stars, plus the five daggers and the siege. So that was pretty brutal for us. Oh, wow. Yeah. And here comes another cloak. And he trains a third one. So, you know... Max is going to have to deal with some pretty heavy pressure mm -hmm. in the next couple of turns. Yeah. And how we deal with it is basically going to decide the fate of the game. Because mm -hmm. if he loses or is not able to defend successfully, then they're going to control more of the map than I do, even though my position is really good. So we can't let them, we can't let Max die. <gasps> Another else, centipede! Um, win. Is this like. Yup. This is like the yeah. 400th centipede that's come out of that city. We didn't anticipate it, but yes, the fifth centipede <gasps> from one city. Five yeah. centipedes. I think mine phase deserves a prize. We put a bunch of units in the way of um, the Gami because not only does it block the Gami, and prevent mm -hmm. um, Polaris from cloaking Max's capital mm -hmm. next turn because they have a cloak north of the Gami mm -hmm. that we can see yeah, yeah. in their vision back here. Yeah. But also because by putting all of our units on these tiles, when we giant push mm -hmm. in the capital, it pushes the catapult backwards, mm -hmm. which is helping protect the catapult at the same time. Yes. And allows us to get one more turn of catapult usage, which in this case is critical because we needed to unsiege my city from that three segment full HP centipede, which is now reduced to an eight HP centipede with one less segment uh, from my giant. Wow. Exactly. So it really seems like it's just a race to. For Chris to expand and get enough strength to keep Chin Chi alive. <laughs> yes. it's This is like one of those video games where you're running really, really fast. And behind you is a moving wall of fire and flames. In this case, bugs and, you know, antlered ice monsters. And they're chasing after you. And you have to run as fast as you can. And if you trip up, if you slip and fall then you die. Yeah. So we had to be very, very precise That's going true. into the later stages of this game. Um, yeah. We get a really here. nice play right here. That's this is huge. Yeah. And this is why I talked about why Simanti's Shaman placement wasn't very good. Ooh. Because I, it allows me to push my rider 
okay. into range of hitting their shaman. And I have just the right HP on my other rider, which is two. <gasps> two HP. Oh! To kill their shaman. Yeah, although those two riders are placed vulnerably to that centipede, uh, that's st it's still not good for Simanti to kill those because although he gains a segment, a giant hit and one or two rider hits kills that head, and we only need two other rider or th up to three, depending on uh, if they have a defense bonus or not, to kill that back end, that back end segment. You have four barter giants closing in on Simanti. The thing is. They are closing in, but giants are slow. Yes. And because Simanti has poison, even if our giants get defense bonuses mm. from, like, forest and things, um, they can use poison to negate those defense bonuses and make it really hard for us mm -hmm. to move in with the giants. At this point now, I'm trying to solidify my position, and I defend Max again from a siege. And now I have lots of units in range and can start to defend Max a little bit better. And I have pretty good stars per turn, too. Chivalry. Yep. So Viking has truly bridged all of the branches of the tech tree here, um, getting both swordsmen, cloaks, and um Oh, he doesn't have, he doesn't have sailing, though. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. He doesn't have navigation. He doesn't have navigation. For... But... <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, they get so yes. much tech this game. So much tech. Yeah. And now that he has knights, it's like really a race against the clock. Because he yeah. goes ahead and um, trains a knight this turn. So we see that and yeah. we're like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, we had some somewhat aggressive placements on Chris's catapults in like the, the north, the center-ish. We had to find a way to compensate for that. and But otherwise, we had a pretty good defense against this knight. These knights, I believe. Yes. Yeah, but you have a line of riders yeah. and catapults and lots of squishy units that you have to be careful. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had to count out all of the tiles as you'll later see that yeah. we have a very large chains of units that yes. if a knight were to reach would be really terrible for us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so now Simanti still goes for this kill on one of our riders and then beats up one of our giants. And on top of that, because they captured this new city, now they have access to a whole new set of centipedes that they can produce. So they go ahead and do that oh. by getting a border growth, which gives them two more fungi. <gasps> And so they're just continuing to, like, <laughs> spit out a lot of centipedes. <laughs> and now Max actually uses construction, getting a windmill in his capital to get another giant. And then destroys all the buildings to make sure that um, even if Polaris captures his capital, they won't get any benefit from it. More scorched yeah, luckily, earth. Yeah, luckily, though, Chris has enough riders to unseize my center city from that, that swordsman, which is very nice. That center city is... Very important as it's like a central hub for where all four all four tribes meet, and having the road connections on that area is pretty important. And... Exactly, you can think of that city like a wooden beam or barricade between Simanti and Polaris. If they break through it, then they connect together, mm -hmm. and they form a barricade between us. But because we own that cent that central city we can divide them and prevent them from helping each other defend. Yeah, that makes sense. Now we continue moving in and start to get rid of Simanti centipedes and putting a lot of pressure on their capital. Yeah, I think Simanti's in trouble now. Oh yeah, they're in trouble. But the thing is, what they're about to do, it's it's pretty it's pretty insane. Right. Um what what happens here? Yeah. Another thing to mention is if you go back to the end of my turn 15. Sure. Yeah, we can see that there's a cloak in between yes. in the tile that's east I of the giant it. and north mm -hmm. of my rider. Yeah. So during Chris's turn, he actually uses one of his riders to kill my low HP rider that's not doing anything in order to reveal that cloak and delay mm. that cloak from getting value for another turn. The frozen yes. rider. Mm -hmm. Watch this. So this is pretty fun. 
we knew that we need to unsiege Max's city. Mm -hmm. So we think to ourselves, how do we best unsiege? So we unsiege, and now what we can do is after we unsiege, we can bring in my little 2 HP, dinky little 2 HP rider that's not doing anything. Killing Max's 2 HP rider, or 3 HP rider that's not doing anything, and use it to reveal the cloak that would have definitely done something to us if mm -hmm. it had hit one of our cities next turn. So that's really, really important. Very cool move. Yeah. And this is all because we don't have a peace treaty yet, whereas they have a peace treaty, so they can't do those kinds of plays. Yeah. Yeah. Look at mm -hmm. the amount of units that Chris has in one giant chain. Like, if that knight <gasps> were to reach any one of those units, <laughs> like, Chris would just be dead. Can that knight reach your units? What if they did a giant push? Even then, it's it still would have been safe. We, we, it's which still is we one got. tile out of range. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. You, you counted up how many, it was more than six tiles. It's actually yeah. eight tiles. Irrespective okay. of if how experienced seven, they are, are reduced like a to a piece of paper with keywords. Like a giant push the knight, they or Gami push the knight, and then chain through our massive line of units. Yeah. For now, Max's position just keeps getting worse. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you thought Simanti was in trouble, just look at this. Like... He's, yeah. <laughs> he's got daggers everywhere, his giants are frozen, there's a centipede just sitting in his territory that he can't do yeah. anything about, and it's just eaten another one of his units. Yeah, the best I could have done was to basically do what I did and turn my uh, cities into negative population so yeah. that he doesn't get any more stars per turn when he captures, and he also can't make any more of those scary gummies. Right. Yeah. And now, Simanti makes one of the craziest plays I I've ever seen. Recycling? So they're in Wait. the face of these giants, and they have to make a choice. What are they going to do? And just just watch until the end of this turn. And you're going to see one of the most insane star increases you've ever seen in your life. Because what recycling does is it gives you all the stars back from the things that you destroy. So just watch how many stars Simanti gets. That's right. It keeps going. And they end up getting over 60 stars what? at the end of their turn. And they're only on two cities. And they have philosophy. So we're going to see what happens. But this is... What? It gets crazier. So not only is that city at like negative 30 population, which means I can't do anything with it, but they have so many stars now to spend. <gasps> yeah. I, at this point, I'm just trying to hold on. I giant pop there in the west city just to buy a little bit more time. And I'm just doing my best. And now I'm moving in. And moving in on Simanti's capital. It's We're still racing at this point because Max's position is falling apart. His catapult gets hit. Massive chain for Viking. Moving into Max's capital here with the Gami yeah. and freezing everything. Shinchi it's, is it's like, down. oh, it's so destruction and mayhem and scorched earth. But Simanti also is doing the scorched earth. They just sabotaged the heck out of their capital. Exactly. But that they got the stars back from recycling. Whoa. Yeah. So whereas Max had to destroy everything just to prevent Polaris from getting it. Simanti can destroy everything and get all the benefits from those stars. Wow. And that is super huge for them because they have, now they have 70 stars to work with. That's they move so on to this village. wacky. They then move on to this village that we that Max had seen earlier. So they have potentially another village to stay alive. Wait, where's we're trying the village? To kill them at this point. Right under this centipede over oh! here. Oh! I totally missed that. Yeah, so they might even capture another city. And this is a problem because they have so many they stars. So many They're stars. Like, oh, they've got to have like 100 <gasps> stars. Wow. So what the, yeah. the play they're going to make next turn. So they get spiritualism. Spiritualism. Then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they want to level up their sawmill to then get another centipede in that city. They sent a message to the game channel after this move, and they told us 
to stay away from their centipede preserve and not harm the endangered species. And we responded by saying that we had called the exterminators. Oh my gosh, I've never seen a game like this. This is wacky. At this point, Max is just destroying as much as he can. Oh, and you and get this is chivalry. The big turn. This is yeah. the big turn. I've been saving stars for a while now. For chivalry. I can get knights. And that's before I capture Symantis' capital. But negative population, I think we did the math, and I think it was negative 38 oh population in that city. Yeah. Yeah. And that was not even destroying all the buildings. That was only destroying, like, three-fourths of the buildings, because they still have, like, a mine left and some lumber huts lying yeah, around. Yeah, they didn't chop. So... Um, they couldn't chop because one of the downsides of recycling is the buildings are destroyed at the end of your turn. So even though they destroyed all the buildings, um, oh, the forest they couldn't chop the forests there. immediately. This turn, I think they just forgot to chop two of this two of those trees. Which yeah, actually they was, did forget to chop two. Mm -hmm. It was pretty huge for us because we were able to use the stars really effectively to. Uh, some play here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, which we I'll see soon. Yeah, we were able to use more riders or trade an extra rider or something. It was, it yes. was good for us. So they made a small mistake. And actually, this is going to cost them because they're going to be just short of another thing they wanted to do. We set up a little giant push into a catapult here mm -hmm. um, that basically allows us to unseize this big rush by Polaris with um, their Gami and their swordsmen and their knights. And we're defend we're kind of hanging on by a thread up there because they have so many knights and gamis moving in. And we have to prevent the knights from hitting the catapults as well. But my position is although it's hanging on by a thread, it's very good. So as long as I can keep going, as long as I can keep pushing, we can win this game. But you have to be careful and with those I start to knights. Train some knights to to help on siege and also to try attacking because mm -hmm. I have been trying to attack Symanti and succeeding but I haven't been able to attack Polaris because they've had those gummies but now we have a weapon now we have a tool that we can use to attack Polaris unfortunately that doesn't help with the fact that Max is still losing and now Polaris gets trade before capturing which means they're gonna get an ice bank soon and get another like 12 stars per turn yeah ice bank it's a lot and so max's units keep falling and they build up this huge army of knights Mm-hmm. it's interesting he sent the knights at chin chi and not at you barter no because he wanted to kill max mm -hmm. because max only has two cities left whereas i've got all these giants that he have to kill with his knights. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to just put Max away as quickly as possible. Yeah. Samanti gets an unlucky explorer ruin. Yeah, it does tell him that I'm I do I'm basically dead in the west. But Max has that giant posted up outside to hit that centipede after it claims the ruin. So we've anticipated that a little bit. And now look at this. <laughs> Max <laughs> <laughs> Did he just get all the tech tree? <laughs> Simanti now has the oh. entire tech tree. Yeah, they had no good way to spend their stars, so this is literally the only thing they could do with wow, like, what, like 60 is, stars they had. That is ridiculous. Correct. <laughs> and they still have stars left over. Well, I can Not get another monument, that, right? <laughs> they are now almost at the same score as their teammate Polaris. With only two cities and 20 stars. That is ridiculous. So they now capture this new city and they start leveling it up. That's so and funny. And we see them place a tower of wisdom and we're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, what the heck? A tower of wisdom. Oh. This is a competitive, this is a competitive game between professional players and they've placed a tower of wisdom. So we're like, what the heck? Awesome. Because just ridiculous. That's outrageous. Oh, wow. And for the a millionth time this game, I've you come unseed. in to unseed Max. Yeah. And now, this is an important moment in the game. We set up a really nice play um, on Max's turn. 
we have a knight, and we still don't have a peace treaty. So we can use our knight to chain through his units. Mm -hmm. You can reach, yeah, you can reach the Polaris units. If he moves the catapult, then it's a bridge for you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so he does just that. Hits that centipede one more time in defiance. We get the vision we need. And with the exact right number of tiles, using the rider bounce to get the vision, we can move the knight to the right spot. And, and chain through those using daggers. Using my teammate's vision, I get this chain. Mm -hmm. And now we can hit Izgami. And this basically buys Max like a whole turn or two. <gasps> One more turn to stay alive. Yes. Yeah, and also, now my giant can survive. Because before I would have been hounded and pestered by those daggers. Now I can go for, sen for a Simanti from the back end as well. Yes. And now we can turn our full focus to Simanti's last two cities mm -hmm. that he's got on disparate sides of the map. Yeah. And we start to march in with the giants. We get rid of that pesky little centipede that was on the ruin. Solidify the defense in the north to prevent all of Polaris's knights from breaking through. And Polaris drops an ice bank. To now be at 40 stars per turn. Wow. Yeah, and unfortunately for Polaris and Simanti, because of their explorers in the beginning of the game, they can't see much into Polaris' territory. Mm -hmm. Like it's he's like a black box to them. Mm -hmm. They don't know how exactly. many knights he has there, how many cities he has, and because of those giants in the front line, they can't really break through with their knights and uh, do any major damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was through a lot of careful planning that we put these giants in these very specific places to basically lock down all of the areas where knights could come through. Right. Simanti in their last breath sends all their centipedes against my giant. Yeah, we calculated it, and we were like, all right, we're, we're happy with that. One HP giant. Yeah. No seconds. And they destroy all the buildings in that city and get a big border growth here. And notice, this is why I said that if they had chopped the forest, they'd have been very happy. Because one of our fears was that if Simanti planted forests on all of their border growth tiles, it would be almost impossible for us to attack mm -hmm. that city because mm -hmm. we can't send knights into it anymore. Right. But they're one short, and that oh. allows us on Max's turn, after Simanti gets a huge amount of stars from destroying all these buildings, on Max's turn, he immediately... Blocks the that onto spot. That one you block it. Because that's yeah, the gateway. Get... That's the entrance. Yeah, yep. once we get um once we get strategy and make peace treaties, that giant won't be because of controlling Chris's knights anymore. So knights are just free to pass through yes. that forest tile southeast of it and then that tile and then have direct access to Simanti City. Exactly. So at this point we're we're feeling it. Because he gets diplomacy. Mm -hmm. And he sends me an embassy. And so here we go. Turn 19. Max gets his embassy up <laughs> with me. <laughs> Before that, the peace treaty would have been bad. But now we need it. Now we need it to close out this game. And my stars per turn keeps going up. And now we feel like we can finally get there. We get this really nice night chain. Mm -hmm. I'm getting rid of all of Simanti's centipedes over there and sieging their city. Nice. And that's... The game feels like we finally we finally weathered the storm. Mm-hmm. We're finally outrunning the wall behind us. The wall we get of... a beautiful night chain the wall into Polaris' of capital. The wall of ice and insects. Yep. So, great night chains this turn. Three excellent uses of knights. And... Lots more units. And Max, just to put the cherry on top, sends Viking a peace tree. <laughs> which he rejects, unfortunately. Uh... And it was on this turn, on turn 20, after a little bit of a show of force from Viking, that they resigned the game. Amazing. And we emerge the victors. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen so many centipedes, let alone that many centipedes from one city. And 
someone getting the Tower of Wisdom and so much scorched earth, both from Chinchi and from Simancy. Yeah, I feel like this game really had it all when it came to things you'd think you'd never see in a competitive 2v2. Um, scorched earth, rarely used. Windmills, you rarely see, especially Chinchi. Weird tribe picks. Insane night chains and using a use of vision and tactical plays from both sides. The one of the highest level cities I've ever seen in a competitive game. I think that city was level 10 by the end of the game. The whole game, it felt like if we made one mistake, we were probably we might lose. We felt like we were on the edge of a great chasm and we somehow managed not to fall in. Yeah throughout that whole game. That's because you kept throwing yeah. Chinchi a rope, and so he didn't fall down yeah. the cliff. Especially towards the end, with uh, Polaris and their knights, we had to really make sure that no unit could get through. We would often get into yeah. uh, voice calls with each other just to plan out each turn. Very careful turns, and that resulted in an absolutely beautiful game from start to finish. Very thrilling and different, really different. Well, thank you so much yeah. for showing me through this. Oh, again, I don't know if I've ever seen a game like this or if I ever will again. Amazing. I don't, I think Max and I were both just like towards the end of the game, just like, what is happening? This is crazy. <laughs> well, thanks, Max. Thanks, Chris. No Absolutely. Problem. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, it helps us a lot. If you want to support Poly Champions directly, plus get channel perks, you can become a channel member by hitting the join button below. For more Polytopia replay reviews and game tips, click the links in the description. Join the Discord, get on a team! A link to the Discord server is also in the description. Take care, see you on the next one.